A few days ago, a tutorial video of mine from a few years ago got a comment and it asked for a specific variation on what was offered in that video. The video was about Microsoft Power Query, a tool that is now built into Excel that can allow you to pull in multiple data tables, append them together into a single table, and then in this instance with this particular video, we removed any duplicates from the final result. And Sylvia asked the question, what if I have multiple files that have multiple tables inside of each of the files? How can I combine those together as easily as possible? So what I've decided to do in this video is offer three tutorials in one. The first is what if you had a single Excel file and inside of that Excel file, there were multiple data tables and you wanted to easily within that data table combine multiple data tables together. Could we make that happen? Then we'll take it to the next logical place, which is there are multiple data tables in a separate file. And potentially you might want to do that across multiple files. And so what we'll do is we will expand multiple data tables inside a single file and then duplicate that process for additional files. But lastly, and the way I almost always do it, is we're going to stash all of the files we're interested in inside of a folder and assuming that those files all have the same basic data structure to them, we should be able to iterate through every one of those files and pull the data tables from every single one. So let's get into it first with pulling the data tables that are inside the file you happen to be on at the moment. So in this file, you can see that I have three tables. So, you know, three tables, 50 tables. It's all the same, except it's a little less legwork for me creating the files. So down here we have tab A tab B and tab C, and inside each of those tabs are tables, and the tables are called table A, table B, and table C. And so what I wanna be able to do is make a new tab down here at the bottom that is going to combine those together. So I'll call this the combined tables tab. And I want to quickly and easily pull all three of those tables, or 50, or 100, or whatever it is, into a single table on this tab. How would we make that happen? Well, the easiest way is knowing just one line of code. You go to the data tab at the top of the screen, you click on the get data dropdown menu. And instead of saying that you wanna get it from a table that's inside of a file or anything like that, we're actually going to go to this option here that says from other sources and click on blank query. So literally nothing is happening so far. So we have this blank query, it's called query one. I'm just gonna double click on this and call this combined tables. And here's the one line of code you need to know. You start off with the equal sign, you type in the word Excel, and it's Excel.CurrentWorkbook, just like this. And uh, then you put an open close parentheses and hit enter, and you see that right there? It now takes an index of everything that's happening in this workbook. You have three tables called table A, table B, and table C. And that's all the data that's in this workbook right now. And quickly, all we have to do is go to the content column here, find this arrow button in the top right hand corner, this uh, expander button is what I call it, because what this will allow us to do is look into each of those tables, find the columns and the data that are in each of the tables and mash them together. So we click on this button and it says, well, those two tables, uh, each have uh, three tables, each have two columns, one called label, one called value. Uh, I always uncheck this checkbox for almost every situation, which is I don't want the word content to be the prefix for label and for value. So I'll just uncheck that right there. And when I click OK, there it is. I have a label column, I have a value column, and I can see that these data points are from table A, 
And as I scroll down farther, I'll be able to see where it rolls over to table B. I made these tables a little too big just for, <laughs> there we go, table B is there and table C is farther down. Now, always take a moment to, uh, in this column, set the data type to text and set this column's data type to whole number, for example. And now we can load this data into our Excel workbook. But there is one gotcha that we'll come back to in a second. So we go to the Home tab. We click the close and load drop down menu and close and load two. And I'm going to specify that this is a table that will go into the existing worksheet right here in cell A1. And when I click OK, there it is. Those all the data results from tab A, B, and C. And if there were 50 of them, it would have grabbed all 50. Here's the gotcha. What we just did is we said to that query, your job is to pull the data from quote unquote all the tables. And what we've just done is made a table that contains the results of the other tables. And so we're gonna, if we ever hit refresh right now, we're going to get into a real bad problem where it combines together tab A, B, and C, and this tab into one table, and we just keep on getting more and more and more of the same data duplicated. So we just have to do one little thing here, which is to go over to the query on the right hand side, double click on it to open the Power Query Editor. And back here on the source step on the right hand side, you see how it currently thinks that the tables are tables A, B, and C? If we hit refresh, it'll go, oh, and oh, by the way, there's also this table called combined tables. You don't want that to be included in the data that's getting aggregated, right? So I use this little drop down menu and I uncheck the checkbox there for combined tables. And now I'm going to be combining tables A, B, and C, but not the table that already contains all the data. We hit okay and uh, hit close and load and all of the data is still there and everything should work really nicely. Now, what if we have multiple files, each of which have multiple data tables and we want to replicate the same process over and over again? How can we make something like that happen? All right, so first, if you notice, I've brought up the February data tables and the March data tables two separate Excel files. We're going to start by querying the February data, then replicating that for the March data pretty easily. And then we're going to come back and do the same thing, but querying everything that's in this folder in one go. So I'm now going to say I want a new tab, and this new tab is called uh, Combine From Files. And once again, we go to the data tab and this time I'm going to go to get data from file from Excel workbook. So I want to query the first Excel file and then use that to query everything else that I need to query. So I query from file from Excel workbook and I choose the combining tables folder here and the February data. So I click on import. Now it would be relatively reasonable to click the checkbox here for select multiple items. But actually what I want to do is I want to do that in the heart of the query. So I'm just going to query one of these tables and we're actually going to undo the querying of this table specifically in just a second. So I click on table A just because I want to query something that's inside that Excel file. And I'll click on transform data in the bottom right hand corner opening the Power Query Editor. There it goes. And I'm going to rename this query to Combined February Data, okay? So as we can see, over on the right-hand side, this query first went to the data source of the Excel file, then navigated to one of the tables inside that Excel file, and then handled the data types. We're actually going to click the X here and not do the changing of the data type and not doing the navigation. And right back here, you see what, what we can do? We can see that there is table A, table B, and table C. There are also the tabs in there, tab A, B, and C. 
And so what we're going to do is just come into one of these drop downs and filter out the things that we don't want. So I want tables A, B, and C, for example, and then hit OK. And do the same thing we did in the last exercise, which is to click this little expander button here and bring label and value from all those tables. Again, unchecking the use original column as prefix and click OK. And there it is. There are all of the labels and all of the values for everything in the February file. Again, we can click the ABC here and choose text as the data type, choose whole number as the data type for this one, and get rid of any columns that we don't really need. So I'll just remove those columns there. And now the beautiful thing is, if I know that the March data has exactly the same thing going on, I can just right click on the query for February, duplicate that query, call this the combined March data, and simply go back to the source level, click on the gear, and navigate by clicking on browse to the March data, and click import, and click OK. And basically everything that just happened to the February data should be easily replicated on the March data. So there's the March data, there's the uh, excuse me, there's the February data, the March data. And now um, what I generally do here is I click the home tab, close and load drop down menu, close and load two. I want to load those two independent tables just as connections here, only create a connection because I only really want the combined data table on the page. So I'll click OK. So nothing's been loaded to this page, uh, but I can double click on any of the queries over here on the right. And what I want to do is I want to append these two together as a new query. On the Home tab at the top of the screen, I can use the Append Queries drop-down arrow and choose Append Queries as New. And in this case, it happens to be two tables. The two tables are the February data and the March data. But if you had three or 10 or 90 files, you could do this and then hit OK. And uh, the query that comes up here will be called Append1. I'm going to call this one Combined files. And now all we have to do is go to the home tab, close and load drop down menu, close and load two, and drop it right into that cell. Let's choose existing worksheet and click OK. Voila, as the French say. And now finally, the easier way of doing this, rather than querying the first file, then you duplicating that, and then you deciding uh, to append those files together, just let Power Query append all of the data tables together in one simple go uh, by querying the entire folder. So once again, I'm going to make a new tab here. I'm going to call this Combine From, uh, from Folder. And if I go to my data tab at the top of the screen, get data from file, this time around, I'm going with a folder. I choose folder here, and I choose the combining tables folder. So everything that's in this folder is going to get combined. I hit open here. It says that you have a February and a March file. Of course, you could have as many of these files as you wanted to. We are going to combine these files together, but I do want to take the intermediate step of transforming the data. So I'm going to choose Combine and Transform from the Combine drop-down menu. And it's going to ask me, okay, if I look at the first file, this is what I see. I'm just going to choose Table A. Once again, we're going to do the same thing. We're going to query Table A, but ultimately we're going to query all three tables or 50 tables or however many there are. We hit OK. This combines it together into a query, but also it has helper elements that build up to that query. So here is the Combining Tables query. And you can see that it's got the February data. And if I scroll down far enough, it also has the March data. But here's the thing. We are currently only combining the table A of every one of these files. 
So we're going to go to this entry here. So you see there's a folder inside of your query panel that says it is the transform sample file. And what this is doing is it's saying, okay, when I look at the first file, this is what I'm going to do. And so if you try different things out with the sample file, it'll do the same thing to any successive files after it. So here on the transform sample file is where I'm going to do what we did in the last exercise, which is to sort of back up and say, actually, I didn't just want table A, right? So over here on the right, we have the navigation step. And I actually don't want to use this navigation step. I want to go back to the source step and you see where we're at with this. There's my tables. I want to go in and filter out anything that's not the tables that I'm interested in and hit OK. And then again, use the data expander here. Get all of the data from the first file. And then in the combining tables down here at the end, then we will have the combined data from all the files. Again, here I can set this to a text type that uh, we don't need these columns over here on the side, so we'll remove those. And again, if I scrolled far enough, I would get to the point where I saw table B, table C inside of February, and tables A, B, and C inside of March. Uh, but for right now, I'm going to hit close and load two, drop it on this page right here into the existing worksheet. And uh, you can watch with me here as we have February, table A, and if I scroll down a little ways, I have February. I should have made these tables shorter so I didn't have to scroll as far. There we go. February table B. And uh, if I scroll far enough down, it gets to March tables A and B and C. So that's how you combine multiple tables from inside of multiple Excel files, as long as you can trust that they have the same structures inside. If not, just go in, query the first one, decide which tables you want to grab, combine those together, and then duplicate it for the successive files afterward.